So, thank you so much for coming. So we made ten, and that's what you were. Mm -hmm. so ten, ten. Ten. Ten quality people. Ten absolute quality people. Yeah, the absolute. So, oh. uh, actually, I, I would like Stephen to introduce himself. I, I went to Finland a week ago. I went with Peter on the boat, because there was his hard workshop, and uh, I was invited to his home with his dear wife, and to uh, have a meal and to uh, share the day, and uh, I was really well cared of. And uh, I know that uh, Stephen has a lot of enthusiasm. Mm. This the word God, <laughs> I think the word God means enthusiasm. I read somewhere. I don't know where because without enthusiasm, life is dead, isn't it? Yeah. So we've come to receive life. So I just like to, because uh, I, I, um, I can't say too much about Stephen. He can say much more about himself. <laughs> so maybe you'd like to introduce yourself first. Okay. Yes. So welcome. Well, okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, honestly, so much for coming. <coughs> You're here for me, and I'm really grateful that you came. It's a, there's really a lot of joy in this room. You know, the way you sang that song, I felt like you were back in kindergarten. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much child heart here compared to Finland, which is not like that. You know? There's so much. And, uh, but you're all here for a reason, and I need you 10, and you are 10. So thank you so much. You know. um, yeah, I have been, uh, when I went to Finland many years ago, I said, what can I do to help this country? And uh, I said, well, I do other things so well, apart from marriages. So I have to do something in this area. This is my life. So I got called and I read many books and many books and thought about it. And then I wrote a book of my own. And then after I read the book, I wrote the book I threw away. <laughs> because the book taught me something very, very important. And it taught me that the principle is, is all, all the companies and all the society and everything else, everybody's trying to use the principle to improve society. But I'd never seen that before. But the book showed me that. And so for the last 10 years now, I've been saying, what is this in this first chapter? that can explain the world and reality and how, how beautiful it is. Yeah? So I, I'm totally inspired by this chapter one. I just think it's the most gorgeous, delicious, wonderful. It's just so, so incredible. <laughs> and we hope you see this today and tomorrow. But, but uh, I just, I just thought every day I wake up with new insights and new thoughts, and I'm writing three books at the same time, and it's terrible. <laughs> and, and every time I talk, I go, oh, I should add a bit more here and do that there. And so any opportunity. So this is a seminar. This, this, today we're going to be talking about, you know, um, I try, I want to, what I want to do today is give you a language to talk about your relationships with, with your children or with your beloved, or you know, to give you a language. Because if I just say, well, you should live for others, or you know, you should be, you know, grateful, or oh, you just got fallen natures everywhere. It's very, very undefined. And so my wife and I, using the what we've learned, what I've learned in my teaching, now have a language to talk to each other about issues in our family and in our relationship. And this really helps us because when a problem comes up, we can say, we can have like, words to describe what's actually happening. And that helps us immensely. Okay? So rather than just saying, you know, just some general ideas, we're going to kind of look at language and uh, an idea of what, what God wants to us, what really God is hoping that we will develop. Okay? So, much of relationship education, one of the basic premise is, is if I get better at relationship skills, if I improve, everybody around me will become a better person. <laughs> Everybody around me will become a better person. So if I become a better boss, my employees will become better employees. They will respond to that. 
if I become a better teacher, a better management, management classrooms, the children will respond to that. And one of the biggest problems in our world today is the belief that if he changed, I could be a better wife. <laughs> We say it the other way around, you know. We gotta be with this relation. We say, if he, if she was better, I would be a better husband. And if he was better, we would say, if he was better, I would be a better wife. And it doesn't work like that. <laughs> well, it does, but it doesn't. It's true if he was better, but it's also true if I was better, my wife would be better. Than I. And that's more true. And to catch that point in my own marriage, sometimes it's been very hard. I wish, I wish she was different. I wish, you know. But learning how to be better at those moments when she's not a bad fellow has been really, really helpful for me. How can I improve so I can better help her at those moments when she's struggling or finding it hard? So it's always about what, what can I learn? If I was better, and that's what, what God wants for us, to be more whole more complete, more loving, more, more a channel for his love. Okay? Can I ask you a question? Yes. If you, if, you have a, if you have that up there, you don't read it, I get a bit kind of, I'm trying to listen to you and then, then I don't look at this. Yeah. So then I think, what's the point of having it? If we can take it home and discuss oh, it. So, so I shouldn't really look at this. Well, you can if you want to. It's, it's there, it's there. Okay. If you want to write notes, okay. it's your choice. All yeah. right, so I should listen to you more than... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, everybody's no, no, different. No, no. I don't guess. listen at all. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do your own thing. Because in my brain, if you read that, I can take that in. Yeah. You see. But if it's there and you're talking, I'm trying to read it, and you're talking at the same time. Okay. That's just me. But maybe okay. everybody else is fine. <laughs> Yeah, it's a problem. Organized team. <laughs> I know. You can't get the two together. Okay, shall I stop and let you read the slide? <laughs> Is that helpful? Well, if you were to read it, then I could both listen and read the slide. Oh, there you go. That's a good point. So we have to give this slide. <laughs> Thank you. And this is this this introduction to the principle, isn't it? Yeah. There's this there's this um, there's this me, and I'm a good part of me, but there's this broken part, of me, and this part of me is. It needs healing and some kind of healing or fixing. But there's still a good part of me. And God can work through this good part of me. And God hopes to work through this. And he does work through this good part of me. Now, some of these good parts of me are very effective. I might be effective at something yeah? in my life. I might be good at listening to my wife. I might be good at washing up or something like this. Yeah? Um, <laughs> Hi, <Hiya, thank you. laughs> But some things might be a bit weaker. I might not be so good. I can listen a bit to my wife, but I can't really listen to her like she really wants to be listened to. Yeah? So that still, is, I'm trying, but it's not, it's not broken. It's just weak. It is weak. I, you know, I just don't quite get it right. Yeah? So, but there's this broken part of me. And so this, this, this comes under, you know, the principles of creation. And, 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 this is principle of restoration, yeah? This is how do I restore that? How do I heal this broken part? We'll talk about that later this afternoon. But this morning we're going to be focused, and this afternoon, we'll focus on this, this bit. We we're focusing on thinking about how we improve, what, what is it in there, and how do we improve it? What are the principles of improving this? Okay? And then we'll look at this, and then we'll talk about how we heal that and try to overcome it. So that's the last lecture. Okay? Does that make sense? Any questions, just put your hand up. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here we have yeah, me and uh, you know, natural, non-fallen part of me. I can grow, I can develop myself. I'm sure some of you have developed yourselves in some ways over the years, I hope so. <laughs> okay? And it's a lifelong learning. Are you still learning things? Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, you're still learning, and you're becoming more effective, effective, more talented, maybe more loving. Yeah, and you kind of embracing your your the goodness that is in you, and valuing it. So Abraham was a rich farmer. Yeah. 
So why does he quit from? That means he was applying principles, he was effective applying principles, he wasn't totally broken, he wasn't totally fallen. People throughout history have built cities and civilizations, and so we didn't completely lose everything. Yeah? So we've applied certain principles to, to, gro to creation and growth and development, and it happens. Okay? So that takes place in following the principles, and I call these principle, principles of co-creation. I'm co-creating myself. I've inherited something from my culture, from my mother, from my father, from my schools and everything. And when I get to a certain age, I can start to say, what do I add to this? What do I add on top of this? What do I place on top? So I'm a co-creator with God, with society, with my family. I co-create myself. Yeah? Do you understand this word co-create? Like yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Okay. So the principles of creation means the principles of co-creation. No, no, this is, this is not how it works. No, no, no. This is co-creation of the co-creation of myself. Myself. Yes. Okay. The principles of creation are the principles we apply when we're trying to achieve something. That's different than trying to say, what do I? What is inside me, and how do I? How do I develop myself so that I can go out? and achieve something. There's a, like a goal. There's a goal out there. And the principle of creation applies to the goal, the external manifestation. So I'm trying to build a marriage. So I'm, I'm, I'm pri my principles of creation are used to create my marriage. But I have to co-create myself so that I can fulfill the needs of marriage. Yeah? Catch that? Yeah, it's like a, like a company has an internal working internal things going on, but it has a product to sell. How do I sell those products? I need all the things going on inside the company, the accounting, the, the human development, uh, et cetera, et cetera, going on inside, so that they can step out the door and say, we have a product to sell. How do we sell this product to the world? How do we design it for the world? So there's the internal processes of myself, and that allows me to be more effective. Today we're talking about some of the internal processes. And tomorrow I'll be talking about the external building. In the afternoon? No, it's after tomorrow for Sunday service. Okay. So I'll be talking about the principles of creation tomorrow. Okay. It's really important you can catch these points because we can confuse ourselves if we don't really understand. Yeah? There's three fundamental things. There's the, the principles of co-creation here, developing the good part of myself. There's the principles of restoration over here, which are a different set of principles. And then there's a, when, I, when I step out of the world or we try to achieve something, there's the principles of creation. Okay? Got that? Sort of. Yeah. Okay? Now, often to achieve that principles of creation, I have to go back inside and I have to develop myself inside so that I'm more effective yeah. in my teaching. Yeah. Yeah? You use the word co. Why do you use the word co? Because I, I didn't create myself in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I inherited so much from my culture and everything else. Why are you so friendly? Is it just because, because you're Swedish? <laughs> Fundamentally, <laughs> you know, other cultures might not be so friendly, or they'd be more, you know, hello everybody and everybody's doing <laughs> And you would be co created by your culture. They would be creating you, and you would be coaching. Yeah. Co-creation is both what's going on inside of you and what's affecting you. And what affected you from the beginning, yeah. So also your family tree, or the strength of your parents, or the business of your parents, yeah. But you have to take responsibility. So you're a co-creator. Because the only way you're going to develop yourself is you take responsibility for who you are. That's it. No one else can do it for you. Yeah. Uh, I can't go to the doctor and say, give me a pill, a principle of creation pill. Or <laughs> Take it. I'm a perfect husband. There we go. Now I have to work at this. This is my lifelong journey. Okay? You get, get this there? Okay. Okay, so in the unification movement, we have these four realms of heart. Okay? So, we say, the first thing we have to do as a child is learn to somehow connect with our parents and appreciate and love and kind of embrace the love of our parents. Have the heart of a child. 
to value our parents, to treasure them, and something like this. Yeah? And from that relationship, we learn a lot about trust, respect, uh, relationship skills, lots of things. Yeah? And then we step out with our brothers and sisters and with our school friends, and we learn about social relationships. But that's on the foundation of the child's life. Yeah? Foundation of how you were treated in those first two years by your parents gives you the foundation to say, this is how I relate with the world. And two years old, you start saying, mine, and give it to me. <laughs> and you start creating things and doing things. And then as you develop your friendship skills and your brother and sister skills, then you, can, you hit couple relationship and you go into couple relationship and you realize you're not perfect with your couple relationship. <laughs> and you have to work at developing your couple skills. And what does it mean to be a couple? Yeah? And then suddenly you have children and you realize that, that you have something more to learn. And each age they get to, you better learn something new. And you learn the difference between a boy and a girl. And all of what they need and things like this. And, what worked before no longer works. I used to be able to get five, four, but they don't do it anymore. <laughs> they don't respond, you know, they used to quickly, you know, calm down, tidy up, you know, put things away. Okay, you know, when they were five or eight, they would do that. But when they got to 12, I went five, you know, they were meant to calm down, settle down, put things away. They didn't listen. <laughs> I had to learn a new set of skills. So we're always being asked to learn, but it's always built on that initial child of love. Okay? You get that? Okay. So the question is, the fundamental question is, what skills are you trying to develop as a little child so that you can go forward with your life? What is happening? What are the internal processes of work that you are being asked, but God wants you to learn so that you can be effective in your relationships. Yeah? Where's God hoping? How does God come into you? How does God work? <coughs> now I've met some lovely people here today already. So God is present. Absolutely God is present. Yeah? And it's wonderful that God is present. But where did this come from? From your first relationships and from the other place. Yeah? But the question is, what is God asking me to develop more? This is the key, key of today's talk. Right? How does God, what does God want? Okay. So this is, it's very interesting. Eric Byrne, in the 1960s, he was the first positive psychologist. And around the 1950s, 60s, there were all kinds of positive psychologists or people emerging out of, you know, Freud and Young and looking at the subconscious and but they were positive psychologists saying, how do I live life well? How do I live life better, more effectively? So Eric Byrne was one of the very first, and he gave this model. And I, thought, I, I taught this model in the course, uh, and I, I, I realized how incredibly valuable it was to, to understand God's love. So, there's basically, there are five textures of God's love. Fundamentally, five different textures. And when we receive them, we know it's love. We feel it's love. We know it's, it, it, it's good and healthy. We know I'm not being disrespected. I know that I'm enjoying this or valuing this and treasuring it. Okay? So, these are five different types. And they're called, there's two children the adapted child, or the teamwork child, the group child, yeah? and the free child. The free child. The free to be myself child. Free to be who I am child. Free with my individual unique needs, at my individual unique need. Then there's an adult. Okay? And then there's two parents. Two parents. One is a nurturing parent, the ability to raise up other people, to lift them up, to make them higher level because of their own. <coughs> and there's also the protective parent, which says, please don't do this, please stop that, it's hurting us. Um, rules and regulations and things like this, and, and 
conflict resolution, if you like this. And so these five textures of love form the basis of what we're trying, God is calling us to develop inside ourselves, the ever higher level of, of, of um, existence. Or, you know. So he's asking us always to develop these five things so that we can more fully represent the expression of God's love. More fully represent God's love. Okay? So, okay. So if we just look at the free, you know, because we have a kindergarten. My wife is a kindergarten. We have little children, two years old, three years old, four years old, five. And we see this every day at work, these principles at work. Every single day we see these happening. So there's two fundamental children. The first thing we would like is a well-behaved little child. <laughs> we would like them to sit nicely in groups, to obey, to obey the rules, to get dressed nicely, to you know, do things at the right time, eat properly at the table. There's all this, don't do this and don't do that. And <laughs> come here and please learn to work in a group. This group work is really important for you because if you can get it right here, then you can get it right in your school and you can get it right in your teamwork and other teamwork throughout life. And you've got to learn the fundamentals. If you don't learn it here, it's going to get harder. So how do you follow group rules? Okay. So there's all kinds of things. You're fulfilling your promises, being helpful, follow rules, fairness. Anything you think of a team and kind of setting, you know, I'm, I'm responsible for this, I'm helpful here, this is what I was there, etc., etc. You're kind of in there. So these are kind of skills that allow me to embody. And maybe you know some people who are not very good at teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> who express, you know, who don't keep their promises and commitments, or, you know, not very fair, or, you know, etc., etc. But the other side, and so when somebody, when a child does this so well, when you have a little perfect child at the kindergarten, and they sit at the dinner table, they eat nicely, and they go to the group work, and they say, well, oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, so nice. <laughs> this is just so nice. You know. yeah. So we're going to be really happy. And when a child is misbehaving, no, 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 this is, we can't do that. That does not express God's uh, But we don't want just robots. We want each child to be a unique manifestation of God. That's life. With their own creativity, their own gift for the world. Because everybody's totally unique. And what are they here to give to the world? So we hope to develop a unique individual characteristic. A unique creativity. But they also have individual needs which is different than the group me. I need to go to the toilet right now. <laughs> For example, and then even if you're in a group, I still have this need. Yeah? So, we call this the individual, the free child. And then included in this is the ability to be honest about your mistake. The freedom to be honest about your own need. The freedom to be honest and to say sorry for what you've done wrong individually. The freedom to be able to do these things. So some I get quite a lot of you know older people who find it so hard to express their own need in their couple relationship, for example. It's quite hard to say, look, darling, I really need time off. <laughs> I need a break. Could you could you it comes out all wrong. <laughs> you know, instead of just saying, darling, I am exhausted, you know, I just need a break for a few hours. Could you look after me? They find it hard, they never learned it as a child. And it's very complicated. It comes out all wrong. And some people find it hard to be honest. They're so frightened that if you really knew me, then you didn't want to be wrong. Then, then, then you would love me or things would fall apart. Things like this. Yeah. So this is what we're hoping that a child, so we're trying to ask, express their creativity, their honesty, to say sorry, all these things. And then the adult, 
We're hoping that they grow to be sensible, age-appropriate behavior. Learn to use the pocket, the toilet. Yeah. Learn to dress themselves. Learn to you know, put things away properly. Depending on their age, we hopefully each age will they'll take more than their personal self-management, self-development. Self yeah. This is not the job of my parents anymore. I am old enough. So we help to develop that. And when we see that's a good, good behavior. And when a five-year-old can't put on their own clothes, they go, what is happening here? We know that there's something wrong. There's something going intrinsically wrong in the child itself. It needs help. Yeah? And then we see, even in the children, even in the children at four and five, we see the desire to become a parent. We see this all the time, the four-year-old and five-year-old, adopting the two-year-old and saying, you are my child. <laughs> it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. And this preciousness of this, seeing it. And they do it, some of them, so well. So beautiful. And you have this child who comes in a little bit frightened and young and, you know, doesn't know what's happening. And he gets this embrace, those couples. And there's always some force that arises within the ch another older child that you are for me to develop myself. This is my chance. And the little one gets taken, and you can see. And we've had these children who come, they're so fragile and so already hurt, actually. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the older ones take them and they, and they dance with them. And they dance really slowly, so the child, not, you know. And they dance in twirls slowly, so the little one can copy and then take care of them in the playground. And you see this beautiful, beautiful behavior. And only the children can do this for the child, actually, yeah. not us. And then this this little girl says, "Oh, this is what it means to be a little girl." And she starts to inherit. And quite quickly, we see this very positive transformation, especially with the children involved. It's very beautiful to watch. And you know God is there. You know God is present in that action. But even in that, you also see this one. You often see the no. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> that is not allowed. I'm so sorry. You know? you know, you cannot steal another joke. You cannot take that toy away from me. You know, these things can kind of things. And trying to help the children solve conflict to learn to teach them how do you solve the conflict without aggression, without any You know. So this is all part of our work in our kingdom. But this environment where God can come to dwell in his children. And when we leave, we hope they have the basic skills for life. Yeah? Okay? Make sense? Yeah? Now, what I'd like you to do. Yeah. Two, four, six, seven, <coughs> I'd like you to come up. Come up the front, all of you. Come on, come. Okay. Okay, come on up front. I want to see the space up here. Okay, you are a nurturing parent. You are part of this, but this is the personality here. And this is your personality. This is your dog. You to raise up, okay? You are Mr. Perfection. <laughs> okay? Okay? You can be adult. Okay. Okay? Okay? And I need two children over here. I can be. You can be a child? Yes, I can be. Okay, you can be the team player, the team, the team player child, because you like the room so much. And here's the free child. So you come over here. Like this, and kind of stand like this. Okay. And adult, can you stand in the middle of the back? Can you stand in the middle of the back? No, no can you switch straight? Uh -huh. Okay. So here we have a complete person. Okay. This is his free child. This is his. So I'm the team player. Oh, the team player. Oh, they're also trying because I know they're good. Okay. We have the team player, part of him, the free child, we have the adult. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Okay, and over this side, oh, okay, okay, we have, uh, what do we have here? We have a uh, oh, nurturing parent, can you hear that? Can you try that? Okay, 
and you can be the protective parent, okay? And you can be the uh, team player, okay? And then you can be the free child, free child, and you're the adult, okay? So, so if you can stand over here, like this, okay? So you're there. And your team, you're the nurturing parent, so can you come over here? Okay. And then three of you can come, can you come here? You're the team player, can you come here? Yeah. Oh gosh, you're so, no, I'm just going to switch you on. Okay. You will be team player, you can do that, because he's a little bit small. <laughs> can you do that? Can you come to the front, please, with each other? Yeah, come here. Okay. Right, yeah, come here. You're a free child. Oh. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, and you're adult, so can you switch places? Okay, so there we go. Okay? So protective parent, adult, nurturing parent, a free child, and a team player. Like what do you have? Okay? So these are different parts of my my of your personality. This is this is the husband over here. Oh, this is the husband. This is a complete husband. Okay? And this is the wife. This is the wife. Okay? Okay. So, if I said to my wife, that's a beautiful dress you're wearing today, which part of my personality is speaking? Nurturing parent. Good. Yeah? Oh, darling, you look lovely in that dress today. Yeah? Okay? And what happens if I said, oh, you don't, you, don't, you don't look very well? Which one is speaking? Protective. Yes, protective. Good, protective. You know, I'm worried about it. I'm protective. Yeah? So whenever we say a sentence, and it's kind of a healthy sentence, it's coming out of some part of this thing. Yeah? So you, like you might say, you know, so team player, as a wife, you say, what might you say to your husband as a, from a team player position? Uh, there are rules to be followed. <laughs> <laughs> there are rules to be followed, yeah. Okay, what else might you say? Fairness. Yes. Could you express that in a sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. You had the TV remote for <laughs> one hour. I'm talking to the team player. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So she's talking to the team player. Okay. Because she's speaking mm -hmm. specifically to the part of the team player that she hopes will respond. She's not talking to the protective parent or the adult or something. She's specifically saying, "I love team player in my husband." Okay. I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm defending myself. <laughs> I'm defending myself. Yeah, that's right, you know. Okay, so whenever we're trying to talk from one part of our personality, we're trying to talk to some part yeah. of the other personality. Okay, you catch that point? Yeah. Yeah? So what might protective, what might adults say to, to, the, to somewhere over here? Who might an adult talk to about something sensible? You know, take a warm call when you go out. No, you're protected. One second. <laughs> yeah, what would you say? Well, we should uh, have some plans for tomorrow or for summer. Very or good. Summer. Yes, we have to think about this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to my dog over there, Hans. <laughs> yeah, my your adult adult. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to say hello, adult. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now what happens if she, the wife, doesn't have much adult at all in her? No. What happens <laughs> if her adult is kind of like almost non-existent? What might be the response? So you're trying to talk to this part of the personality. Well, no, I can imagine the free child aspect of it. <laughs> nice. Yes, what well, that fun now. Oh, yeah, good, good. good. That might come back, you know. <laughs> Oh, why should you plan the weekend, exactly. darling? Let's go and do something nice now. You, you're going, no, I want to know what's happening this weekend. So it can cause frustration. 
When something's not developed, it can go. so when you're talking to the team player, and the, team, the husband doesn't have any team player, and you're trying to talk to this, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It just doesn't go in, you know. He might say, well, if you talk and there's no team player, what might you say in return? Yes. Because you said, let's, let's, let's uh, clean the house a bit. Let's just say you clean that. We need to clean the house up. We've got guests coming. What might the three child say? Some fun and joy. Yeah, we should, you know, we should dance and sing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened. It goes like, you know, so many times in our couple relationships, we're trying to talk to some part of our partner. And it's not there. Where is it? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is what's happening because we haven't developed something. And God, but God will not let us not become God's sons and daughters. So you will keep asking, you will keep hoping, you will keep trying. Yeah. You, you might start shouting. I you think know? it's fair enough, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What happens if they give up? Who <laughs> if, if, if one of the one of these roles? Yeah. Why is that? You know, what's the point of talking to you anymore because you don't respond as a team player? Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll talk about that. That's the point. I mean, the point is you'll make the grow yeah. to become a full embodiment of God and love. Yeah? So, what happens if this, this beloved wife over here, she's very stressed about something. Very stressed. So who over here should be kind of doing something? Who over here should, because she's stressed, who could be doing something? Nurturing parents. Okay, what, what my nurturing parents say? Don't worry, you're good as you are. Right, well, how does a woman respond to don't worry, don't stress? Don't worry, don't worry. Who else can be doing something? You should have talked to the protective parents. Oh, now what would make the protective parents say? Yeah, I would listen and. Uh, and good. Find yeah. what's really behind it. Find out what's really behind Even though she's kind of going, oh, yeah. you know, and you want to run away. You know, normally, what you need to be doing is saying, come here now, yeah? Those words are good as adults. Yeah? Actually, good. Adult can also solve the problem. Yeah. Yes. It's a bit of a make up problem. But that would be very responsible. Okay, you are problem now. Okay, I step up. I can help you. you know? Yes. Good. Good. Yeah, just tell me what the problem is and I'll fix it. Yeah. Good. You can listen. You can say, let's, what, what's the problem and fix it. Even the team player can step in. Yeah? And say, you know, just also, you know, it seems like you feel like you're overwhelmed or something. Can I do more to help? Et cetera, et cetera. So there's a whole range of possibilities, but most men run away. Free <laughs> child. <Okay. laughs> I don't know about that. We're talking about that in something. But this is what's happening in our relationships. We're, we're trying to expect something to be there because, because to, for the relationship to work properly, you need to be a true man and you need to be a fully true woman. And if you are, then you can always talk to each other perfectly. But we get into our marriages and we're weak in some areas. And the whole purpose of your, you will keep asking, make up team prayer, come here, do <laughs> I need you, you know? Yeah? And as free child, you know, what would you love to do with your the wife sometimes? How about some reflection and romance? Oh, how yeah. about reflection and romance? And what happens if she doesn't have a free child? <laughs> what happens? Who can respond to if she says, let's have some reflection and romance? Grow up. Grow up. Well, who else might say something? You know? The team player. Team player might say, yeah, we've got so much to do. Yes, we, we really have to clean the house. We are together as a team. Huh? We are together as a team. So. Yeah. I catch that. I catch that. But the, you, you might be more the you know, adult. It's true you might do that. But she's trying to talk to the child. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 
So be more, be more responsible. Be, be more responsible. Yeah, be more responsible. Yes, don't you realize we have children and things like this, etc., yeah. etc. Et et so this is the problem. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. But you can start to see how it can get very messy, complicated because some people haven't developed certain skills. You know? So my life is all my life of relationship is always this, this 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 problem of trying to get something from my wife that she doesn't have. And also she I'm trying to she's trying to wake up stuff in me that I don't have. But God wants that. Together because they need different things from each other. And then you go out. And you're on this different level, especially in the beginning when you're on a different level until we adjust to come to the same level. Well, yeah. Further on in time. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, when we marry, except if we choose, we, we get somebody or we receive somebody who can help us grow. And that's the point. Yeah, we will see somebody who has something in them which is stronger or better than us and is kind of trying to raise us up. And we also hopefully will be better in some areas and we can raise our partner up. If we really could grow. It all comes down to this is a growth relationship and it's a lifelong relationship. And I'm still asking things from my wife. She can't give me her. And she's still asking things from me which I can't give her. Yeah. But she wants me to come back. So I noticed this with my children. I, I, my protective parent was non-existent. <laughs> Nothing. So she had to do it. And then she kept, got it all wrong. And it didn't work so well sometimes. You know? She said, come on, wake up, you protective parent. You're going to discipline the children and protect the children. And like, nah, I'm like, what's that mean? Because my dad never did it. You know? Never. So I have no, no pictures, no idea what it meant. So I'm getting better, but it's taking time. You know, just, I'm so frightened that yeah. if I do that, and, uh, it's kind of, it's, you have to heal all kinds of things. And it, it's a, like to get that point, we oh, I can do it. But it's difficult to both, both, you know, both you know, wife and husband have no protection. Yes. Yeah. 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 And a lot of children today, a lot of adults are not very good. Today. I mean, it's just a deal with everyone. No, but he didn't get it. None of us. Yes, if you didn't get it, but how do you pass it on to your children? Yeah? So, it's complex. Okay? So, this is the purpose of our marriage, is to grow to become God's full embodiment of a man who can express all the types of God's life. So, whenever, whatever my wife is doing, I can go, okay, which part is needed? comes out, it does its job properly, and then it goes back again. Yeah? So I, I notice, so she's getting a little bit stressed because we have a guest coming. I say, okay, I have to clean three days in advance, not the last minute, etc. So I clean up the house, I pack up the wardrobes, even though the guests never go there. <laughs> <laughs> and she's come, you know, so I can work with that. Yeah? So, um, or I can, you know, and, you know, so this is this. You catch it, okay? Right. One second. One second. Let's see if we can talk about what it's in. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So this is. Um, okay. Good. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. We get it back to Thank you. We'll do real team things. Let me ask you this point. That this comes from this, uh, the writer of the positive thinking. Yeah, he can uh, learn. I picked it up from him. I changed the term from from he, he had control in the parent, and I couldn't work with that in my own life. I didn't like the idea of control, but I could work with protecting. I'm trying to protect my children. I'm trying to protect my relationship, not control my relationship. But the whole structure and point of view. Yeah, it was written in a book called the Ga he, he just pulled it out. It's very small. He was talking about the games people play. The book was called The Games People Play. Oh, yeah. And the main thing is about the, the games people play because they don't know to do these things properly. So he only wrote a, like two or three pages on this theory. But I took it and said, this is what, this is what, you know, this is how it works in life. His name is Eric Byrne. Eric Byrne, yeah. yeah. 
positive thinking because we hear a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and so he was one of the first. First, and then there's developing yeah. millions into theology and so forth. Good. Good. But it's quite structured. And I didn't, oh, okay, that's. Yeah, you find a good yeah. part yeah. and then you can solve problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so we reach, we reach adulthood looking a bit like this, you know? So something's completely missing, something's weaker than they should be, yeah? And our lifelong task, God wants us, because he will constantly ask us, he will constantly set up situations and say, wake up, in fact. Wake up, develop your nurturing, develop your adult. Constantly, life will come to you, and you have to find a way to solve those problems, and you have to grow to solve them better as you are now. So if you don't do it in your lifetime, then the children... Children, good, yeah. good. And then, okay, you can pass your weaknesses on to your children as well in your strength. Yeah? So, how do, so, but life will always come at you and demand because, because you can only solve life problems with these five things. This is how life works. And it will constantly say, and if you're not, if you don't know how to do it properly, then you'll end up in a situation where it, it demands that you develop this. Now we can refuse. We can say, I don't want to become a human prayer husband. I don't want to sit here and flip through the channels. We can refuse to do that. Yeah? Or we can refuse to become nurturing human beings. We can refuse to read the books on how do I raise up my husband? How do I help my husband become a better husband? We can refuse to read the books on parenting and protecting them. We do not want to grow. We can desire not to grow. But if we want to grow, we can. We can become more effective, just like we become better at anything. It's our choice. Okay? So this is kind of cute, you know? So here I am. So, the, as I said, we... we, we oh, Wait a second. Now, what we find, what I find in my own relationship, because I tend to be stronger here, here, and here, that I tend to try and solve life's problems by using the, one of those three. In other words, because my protective parenting was kind of weak and my team player wasn't so strong sometimes, when a problem came, I tried to say, can I solve it with one of these three? So, for example, if my children were misbehaving or something like this, my thinking was, well, I grew up to be reasonably. <laughs> I just keep loving them and hopefully it will go away. You know, I wouldn't say, excuse me, Sam, I really need to talk to you. We've got a problem to solve. Because I didn't have those pictures at all in my life. So I just kind of said, well, I believe, I trust that my love will somehow make it happen. And sometimes it did. <laughs> and I wish I'd been clearer sometimes. Yeah. So I tend to solve my problems with this. And I understand that much better. So when, 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 when somebody comes to me in a nurturing way or a playful way, I, I can relate so much better with that than a person who just says, I just have to follow the rules. And <laughs> <laughs> it's easier for me to connect with somebody who laughs yeah. in that sense. Yeah. So, I'm, but my wife is different. She has an other strength. So when she tries to solve problems in life, she will use one of the other ones. Yeah. It might not be the right one, the ideal one. She might be better if she solved the problem through nurturing or through being playful. But she instead, because her natural strengths are protective parent and adapted child, she will try to solve the problem using those ones. And it doesn't always work. It kind of creates the tension because she's using the wrong one to solve the problem. But it's still love. The point is, it's still both love. And I don't recognize things like that sometimes. Yeah. So, when I'm sick, when I'm sick, I, when my wife is sick, I tend to say things like, um, darling, you just rest. Just take my down. Just rest. Or I would kind of try to encourage her uh, by saying, let's watch a nice movie. This is kind of have a laugh. Enjoy ourselves and laugh together. And kind of, you know. So I would just kind of 
I will try to be this kind of nurturing of, you know, make this a nice food, chicken soup, and that kind of idea. But my wife, when I'm sick, she would say, why aren't you taking your medicine? <laughs> why aren't you, you know, being protective? You know, she's trying to be protective. How many reasons properly? You haven't exercised enough recently. All these things. We try to sit for a lot of time on a year. But because I'm so used to solving problems for this nurturing and huge child, I don't often see it like that. I don't see it in front of that. It is that. So, you know, it's true. I do lose some weight. It's true, absolutely true. I do. Yeah, especially I had a knee operation last year and I put it off the weight. And if, if I have to lose this weight, then it's out of being. So it's no good of just saying, here's some chicken soup. <laughs> you know, let's laugh at a movie or something. Because it won't help me lose weight. <laughs> so she's absolutely right. You just don't make to see it that So you can see how it starts to work. So we have a language to talk about our problems together. So I can say, oh, look, you know, I'm kind of struggling with the very much natural. Yeah? <laughs> You know, yeah. she might say, well, what does that mean? Or, you know, I said, this is what I'd like. You know, I have a need. And she might be saying, well, I'm, I'm really stressed. And what you're being there is no one might be seeing people, you know. So I said, yeah, OK, what do you want me to do? Because I can understand that God wants me to do, you know, the system is asking me to do more. And we can talk about it, and we know we're here to grow. Why don't you catch the point this is a lifelong growth? And there's some so fine points like listening. And to listen, you can listen with nurturing parent. You can listen with protective parent. You can listen with adult. You can listen with free child. And you can listen with it. And you can speak with all those. And you can act with all those. And getting good at all those things. So how do I really listen to my wife's problem? You know, some psychologists become really, really good at listening. And in a few minutes, they can, can hear. Was it perfected in love? Is it so bad? Yeah. But who can develop that? Yeah. Who can work on that? Yeah. So in your relationship, your wife also is on board with all this. Yes, we, we, we talk, we talk, and you can use this as a language yeah. to, to explain what's happening, you know, and, and, and allow us to, to communicate instead of just saying, I feel frustrated. You know, you're not living for the sake of others. So these kind of words which are kind of vague. Not clear, but when we understand each other, then we have a language. And are you clear which role you're playing? <laughs> yeah, we can talk. No, no, I mean, in a situation, you, you can both identify, and now I'm the nurturing parent. I know you're the child. <laughs> well, you can think like that if you really want to. <laughs> yeah? I mean, if you really want to go. But my hope is that you can take this and go back home and start talking in this way. And the main thing, one of the main things, is for you to walk away and say, I've got one thing that I need to be working on. My partner would like me to work on. Once, one, if you can do every two months, take one little piece of this and say, it, it needs to improve, we need to work on it. And say, OK, you're a little bit better. It takes time. Yeah? You can read books online. You can talk to people. You get all kinds of information mm -hmm. and develop it. And then the next two months, maybe work on a little bit something else. And over the course of three years, you might work on 18 things. And you're an absolutely different person. You may not be perfect, <coughs> but you will start to understand things and grow and develop. And, and you have to work on this just like you work on lots of other things, like doing your bank account or, or developing your career. And then you slowly become better at it. Okay. So as I said, my wife tends to me, my wife tends to be like this, and I tend like this. Yeah. So I spent a lot of my early years of my marriage saying, be a bit more playful than that. <laughs> be a bit more, you know, dress a bit more colour. She used to buy the cheapest. Or, you know, um, not the most cut not a couple of things that suit you. It would cost 10 euros an extra. That's something nice. You know. I have to just enjoy life together more. Because she was very focused on 
children doing the FEMA and getting the house done, and being pretty hot out. I just feel like it a bit more. So, and, and she's been asking me, please give me more of this, you know? You know, go off, you know, we've got a family, we have to work together. Yeah. So this has been our life, okay? Life, spiritual life, you might say. Okay. So fundamentally, we have um, we have this. So we, we talk about truth, beauty, and goodness. Do you have the saying in Swedish? Truth, beauty, and something like this? Yeah. So truth, beauty, and beauty comes out of these things. So beauty is when we put the free child under certain rules and regulations. So when we do a piece of artwork, which is one of certain internal rules of art, and you get the right, you know, things there, or ballet is kind of, you know, creativity, but certain rules and regulations, and, and, and Shakespeare follows certain rules, and, and, and that's on top of that creativity. So we say beauty comes from this kind of area. A truth comes from this sensible, rational place, and goodness is when, when, when a person is either nur is a nurturing person, like a good teacher, um, a, a, a person who can, can help raise up other people, or a person protecting. So we have war heroes, or war heroes, or firemen, or these people who involved in society. So once you understand that we're always being human, this, this, this model applies to companies, it applies to societies. Every system needs these five developed to a certain level for it to work quite well. Every human system needs all these five things developed to a certain level for it to work quite well. If something is missing, the system will start to fail. So if you have a company what do you have? You have protected parent like contracts, methods of disciplining workers, complaints, workers' complaints, committees, all these things which could then protect the system. But also in a company you want to raise up people, educate them, reward systems, all kinds of things. How do we help people grow? You need sensible things going on, of course, design proper design offices and proper systems and sensible systems and things like this. You need creativity, the freedom of individual expression, the freedom of workers to come up with new ideas, um, the freedom of, 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 of um, their needs or their desires and this kind of area. And companies also need to follow the, the rules of a company. Company rules, company documentation, follow the, the, the rules of life or of society. And anything that's missing from that, it will start to weaken. Start to weaken. It will not function properly. And companies are all the time trying to say, how do we do this better? How do we bring more of God's energy into our help into our into our church, into our, into our um, company, into our family, whatever it is, we need these things. There's always being human. Always. Okay. How I, how would you come to the conclusion that beauty, truth, and goodness? Are linked to these different it's just somehow an idea because I do see this. I see that beauty comes from the creativity following rules, and I do say goodness when we say this. This certain goodness in people is when they kind of helpful of others or protecting of others. Yeah? So you might be charity work, or you might be something else like this. There's a certain again, sense of goodness to for others because emotion is linked to beauty and intellect to truth and the will to goodness. Yeah, but you, you can talk about it, but don't, don't go there yet, okay? <laughs> you, you, you're, you're hypothesizing, you're putting all these things from the, somebody else said, okay? I'm just trying to say this is what I see. This is what you see, okay? Yeah, when you talk about living for others, we say this is a good person, this is goodness. 
Yeah? When you see this living for others, and when one person is just creating something, expression, something, this we say is, this is beauty. Yeah? It may be also living for others, it's, it's given to others, but the, the, we take beauty from it. You can also see beauty in goodness, and goodness in beauty. I don't want to say you can't. <laughs> and truth is there all the time. They're all there. But uh, I just something on the side. It's not. Okay? But are you saying that we can uh, analyze all organizations also? Uh, Good. Good. Yeah, you can take this. I could, you know, I have a worksheet, and you can, uh, you can take it into your company, you can sit down, and you can say, rationalize and think. Is there enough nurture parent in my home? Is enough protection? Do people feel there's enough protection here? Mm -hmm. Can they say what they want to say? Can they share their ideas without fear of being stolen? Mm -hmm. You know, etc. Do they think the processes are run properly in the company? Is it adult enough? Is it sensible processes? Can processes be improved? Is there room for creativity and individual expression? Is that is that allowed or is it not allowed? Each company is a different need. So if you're a fireman, you're a kind of different need than, than a Google, where you, you need more creativity. So you need a different balance. But within our system, is there something not, not that could be there that's not? And we can recognize that. So you can discuss that as, as people in your department and say, are these all covered to the level that you would like to see? Yeah, catch that? Yeah? So, okay. <coughs> okay, so basically the conclusion is, as God's children, we are asked to express this, God's love, yeah? In ways that God expresses love. And that we return to our natural selves. This is natural. It's not just human systems that express these five sides of love. When you understand them, all animals, whole of creation, have to follow these five rules to exist and maintain itself. It is embedded within the whole of cosmic system. It is part of God itself. And that's the way he expresses himself so that you can see a flower, you can see a bird, and you can see a human being. Because all systems, all of cosmic systems, need these five things, even down to the smallest atom, need these five things to function. So if I look at a bird, what's happening in a bird's nest? With a, you know. So you've got what? Well, you've got nurturing of the baby. You know, to, you know, nurturing. If a cat comes, the birds will go, you know, so try to frighten it away or chase it away or do something to protect it. If it's raining, it will cover it. They're sensible. They try to, you know, do the bring the food in at the right time and they're trying to build a nest in the right place and etc. etc. They're following that rule and they follow the rules of their species. They don't say, well, I don't want to sing that stupid song again. <laughs> the stupid song. We sung it hundreds of times. Why don't we sing something else? We just start singing something else. Nobody goes, what the earth are you? You know, you're not one of us. You know, and you have to fly south, and you have to fly north, and things like this. And you have to follow the rules of your species. And you have to dance the dance you have to do to get the girl. Because otherwise the girl says, who are you? I don't want to meet you. You know, I need a guy who can dance the dance. You know, I so you have to follow the rules, you know. And then you have creativity, you might have singing in the morning or swooping at night or these kind of dances and a certain kind of creativity and dance between the couples and things like this. So all these five things are essential for animals to exist. And plants too, you can see the protectiveness of plants and as you get to know more, they send out scents to protect each other and they, they, they feed food to their babies through the root systems and they try to nurture them. And, and all kinds of things, yeah? So, it's, it's, it's a whole of it, it's like you, just when you realize the whole cosmic fabric is based upon these five fundamental types of love. And that's what we're being asked to express. We're being asked to express this five fundamental love to the best of our ability so that we can live life well. And that's, we can't escape this. To escape it, to say, I don't need these things, I do not need to develop these things, will only lead to unhappiness, and only lead to, to dysfunctional. Does Eric Byrne uh, also 
see how this can be applied to all of these. No. So this is your insight. When I caught it and I caught you match it with the principle and you start to say, oh, this is what's happening. So he's only talking about human relationships. No, he doesn't talk about it. They, they do talk about it because they, they, but their main goal is to help people. They don't think that it's on the individual level, you know. Because when you don't do this, you use something else, which we talked about this afternoon. We use fallen natures, but he called it games. It's the games people play, so that was his book. And he talked about the different fallen natures he saw. So people play games rather than use this. So he was interested in games, because it's a psychoanalytical. He wasn't interested in how this applies to the rest of the world. I took it and I started to realize, oh my gosh, this applies to the world. The cosmos, to all of that. And our goal, our, it, it, that's how we become a natural, healthy, wondrous human being. The more we, so you walk up to me and you're feeling sick and you get the perfect response from me. Or you, you know, you, you just get the uh, feeling of closeness and connection that you're talking to exactly the first part of you that you really want to talk to. And it's in developing. You know, and you feel, oh, this is one. This is good. This is beautiful. So when my, my wife comes to me and she's kind of hoping that I will just massage her feet to the right way, the right way, the right time, and I do it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven, you know. Or I clean the kitchen exactly the way she likes it done, or, you know, and close the way, you know. So all these things um, we become better at. So. Our job is to become this embodiment of the fundamental, natural nature of the universe. And we have become lost because of our fallen natures. But it's always the difference between the rest of nature is that I have to work on this. Even if I receive a lot of it from my parents, in the ideal world I will see so much more, I still have to take responsibility for love and more. Whereas a bird does it, a flower does it. But I always, always have to take the choice that I am going to love you. That's my choice. And to escape it, to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to help her. I'm not going to learn to listen to her. I'm not going to learn protective love. It's just to make your life unhappier than it should be. Because you're already using many wonderful gifts already. And you don't know you're using them. Because they're just part of you. You just go, oh, I know how to do that. I know how to do that. I know how to clean the kitchen. I know how to do this. I know how to you know, uh, have the conversation with my wife and stuff and things, etc., etc., etc. I already you do it naturally. So when you learn these skills, you, you don't realize you know. You, know, you just do them. Do you understand? Know mm -hmm. You just are that. So we already have been, the fact that you're sitting here wondrously as a beautiful, adapted children, and there's some smiles which give me some free child, and you're sensibly writing away, etc., and you're kind of talking, showing interest, which is showing some poetry, etc., etc., and there's nobody making a lot of noise and screaming, and I have to say, stop it, you know, shows us a lot of God's love here already. So, thank you. Okay. So I have some worksheets. I have some worksheets for you. The last 50 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So for the couples, of course you can get a copy you know, and do it, you know, grab a copy and come back and discuss. So for the couples, I have this worksheet. For you. Mm -hmm. okay. And for you. <coughs> this worksheet. Okay. And then the others, the other six, mm -hmm. if you come together in a group and just discuss something from this sheet. Yeah. From this, this sheet, yeah? Because mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they, you know, they would talk more intimately as a couple. And uh, you would be more open. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, yeah. so if you want to get a coffee first or something. So if you want to, if you could move back there, yeah? And if you could move back there, yeah. then the others can sit here.